So also another background of the this energy management is also in this uh, this famous European uh, directive of the energy efficiency from 2012 and <laughs> This session in Article 5, Section 7, defines to put in place an energy management system, including energy audits as part of the implementation of their plan. So all the member states should encourage public bodies, public authorities, to set an energy management, to set the person responsible for the energy management. This can be within the municipal employee or can be uh, outsourcing as well. So. I said uh, from December 1st, 2017, 1% uh, of the total floor area, which are heated or cooled, building owned and occupied by its central government, is renovated each year to meet at least the minimum energy performance uh, requirement. So uh, the 1% rate should be calculated on the total floor area of the building with a total useful floor area over 500 square meters. But as uh, January 1st, 2019, the threshold has be, shall be low, it, it has been lowered to 250 square meters. So in the energy management uh, information system, you should include all the buildings with uh, 250 square meters or more. Uh, of course, each member state uh, differently uh, transposed uh, into the national legislations. We transposed uh, in Slovenia this uh, European uh, directive in, with the Energy Act, uh, with the Article 224, where we require uh, to establish uh, energy management in the public sector and to set uh, annual and long-term goals on the energy efficiency, energy consumptions, and uh, also for the exploitation for the renewables. We have to prepare the action plan of the measures to achieve all these objectives. Uh, these are local energy concept, uh, which is a sort of the SAP. Uh, all the municipality have to appoint of energy managers. As I said, it can be within the municipality staff or can be outsourcing. Uh, it is necessary to regular collect the data on energy and water consumptions. Uh, we call it so it's energy accounting or energy bookkeeping, and this can be easily done in the Excel sheet or can be with the sophisticated uh, software. It is uh, very important to verify all the objectives to a report on the achievement. Uh, in Slovenia, we are mandated; uh, it's mandatory to report every year. Uh, how we achieved and what are the measures has been implemented uh, over the year according to the action plan. And of course, uh, we have to constantly have a information and awareness campaigns uh, for all the users. What is adequate administrative structures uh, of the energy management? Uh, it is highly recommended that the energy manager, uh, whether it is uh, within the appointed within the staff of the municipality or it is uh, outsourced to have a direct uh, direct uh, a link with the decision makers so to the mayor to the municipal uh, municipal administration director head, head of the departments uh, deputy mayors uh, and so on <coughs> and also to have a <coughs> direct influence and direct contact with the users of the buildings, uh, maintainers, accounting uh, departments and other managers of the buildings. So it is crucial this cooperation with departments uh, in, in, inside of the municipality and also with the departments uh, within of the buildings. So, uh, Energy management systems uh, means a set of interrelated uh, or interacting elements of a plan which sets an energy efficiency objectives and a strategy to achieve these uh, objectives according to the Directive uh, 27 from 2012. And this energy management system allows the public bodies to better manage their energy uh, consumptions, uh, also including uh, monitoring performance indicators and collecting the energy data, analyzing this data, defin def defining uh, the, the weak points, 
uh, defining and evaluation investment measures to reduce energy use and achieving savings by optimizing the performance of existing systems, uh, implementing, uh, executing of all these measures and achieving the savings, and of course to have a monitoring, controlling, uh, verifying systems. Uh, here are some uh, very important phases. Uh, systematic acquisition of the energy stocks. Uh, so it is very important to define the building stocks. In many cases that we find uh, the building stocks uh, is not very known to the municipalities because they own a lot of buildings, a lot of a lot of lofts, lofts, a lot of um, apartments, and it's uh, very essential to create the building stock of the buildings which are owned by the municipality. Uh, energy data, it is uh, in the past, it was very difficult to collect this data in a regular time intervals. Uh, now we are using uh, softwares of uh, energy booking. This is much uh, easier and it's very important to do all the preliminary analysis and to execute the energy audits. The second phase is processing and analyzing energy data. Analyzing of this energy data reveals opportunities for the understanding the patterns of the users of the processes within the buildings and uh, reveals opportunities for improvement in the buildings. So what such as the reports, templates, calculations uh, and to introduce all this uh, to propose the measures for the energy efficiency to raise the energy efficiency. And of course, the implementation and actions um, to select of the concrete measures to create all the necessary uh, documentation uh, according to the law of the European Union. There must be uh, some according to the uh, amount of the investments. There must be some uh, investing documentation prepared, such as visibility studies, uh, investment uh, investigation documents, uh, financial and economical analysis. Uh, and then, of course, it comes before it comes to the implementation. And as I said, monitoring and verifying uh, actions are, of course, of a huge importance. Uh, systematic uh, acquisition of this energy data. Uh, the very first step of this energy management in public building is this systematic acquisition of the energy data, uh, which is also the focus of our course. Data collection provides base for the energy planning making sustainable energy action plans. Uh, also, uh, there is a tool for prioritizing the buildings, uh, planning the budget, budget, municipal budget, implementation of these actions and follow up actions and monitoring. Uh, roughly, we will focus on four important uh, key aspects of systematic acquisition of the energy data, uh, establishing energy monitoring information system, uh, creating building stock inventory, preliminary analysis and the energy audits. So energy management information systems. Um, energy accounting or this information system is a system of collecting and monitoring data on uh, energy use in a building and it's kept as a computerized database. Uh, this is one of the key elements of comprehensive energy uh, management program, and it provides uh, opportunity uh, and provides relevant information to key individuals and departments that enables them to improve energy performance. Uh, it is often integrated with other already existing IT equipment available, uh, like human resource system, business modeling system, and so on. Uh, the main benefit of applying this uh, information system are saving time and, of course, the personal uh, capacity, uh, provision of accurate and uh, timely informations. You can always can do a benchmarking uh, analysis among the buildings, among the municipalities, and so on. Um, simple process of uh, manipulating, analyzing, and storing data for uh, future references. This is very important if. Uh, the stuff change that you can have uh, or analyze and storing this data. Uh, direct decision support tool uh, for the decision makers is easily to interpret to the uh, not only to the decision makers but also to the managers of the buildings, uh, owners of the buildings, and the other operators. 
its uh, capability to provide <coughs> more accurate projections of the energy use in the future and under change uh, and under change synchrotenses. Um, this helps also to to plan the city budget. Uh, it's very useful for the economical and financial department and shows data visualization and visualizations of the trends, which is very helpful uh, for the decision makers. This is one example. Um, this is the one of the use softwares that we are using, um, which is a uh, software and is also um, connected with the uh, e-electronic invoices. So the, when the electronic invoices comes into the into the municipality, this is automatically goes into these uh, systems. Uh, So this is also uh, how we can present this uh, analysis. This is uh, 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 this is uh, um, uh, energy consumptions, uh, heat and electricity over the year over the years. So we can we can make a benchmark also analysis uh, comparing to the years. We can have also uh, within the year comparing to the months to the days. It's a, a huge possibilities uh, how to visualize. The energy consumptions uh, in, in the buildings. So the building inventory, uh, as a start of this energy management in a municipality, uh, it is essential to collect concrete information about the buildings owned and used by the municipality. So include all the buildings with uh, conditioned area. This means conditioned means heated and cooled area more than 250 meters. Uh, the main information that are necessary to to include in this building inventory is, uh, of course, the official name of the building, address, category, uh, specific feature in the use, so kindergarten, school, and so on. Occupancy is the municipality the owner or the building is leased, rented. Uh, what is the status in the context of refurbishment? Uh, nothing has been done uh, already refurbished. Uh, it is in the it is in the plan. It's partly refurbished and so on. Uh, it's very important that year of the constructions of the and the possible refurbishment. Uh, very important area surface area in the square meter. Uh, what is the conditional surface area and conditional? This is difference because the surface area is bigger than conditional surface because inside of the buildings you can have a area which are not uh, uh, conditions which are not heated or which are not cooled usually this kind of the services are garage or uh, holes or uh, other uh, areas uh, what is the type of the heating system and what is the main energy sources for heat what is the energy carrier or the fuel oil biomass uh, gas or so on and what is the energy consumptions for heat electricity and water specific uh, when we Building when we are creating the building stock in one of the our municipality, uh, we found the huge building in the city center where nobody knows who is paying the the bills, who is paying for the heating. The building was totally empty, and uh, we could not find the bills uh, for heat and electricity of that building, and it was owned by the municipality. And this building was in the city center, so. It is very important to find all the buildings uh, which are owned by the municipality. So when we are talking about the preliminary analysis, uh, this is mainly coming from the questionnaire form. One of these questionnaire form you can see on the monitoring. Uh, this is from our one of the we developed this one in one of the our European funded uh, project. Uh, this will give us a rough an overview of the many buildings in a very short period of time. Uh, it is not necessary to see the on-site visit, uh, and this will help us to form an overview of a possible measure to increase the energy efficiency of the building uh, with the rough idea on the time frame needed. And this will also give us a uh, possibility to prioritize the buildings for elaboration of this long-term uh, strategy. Here is, as I said, here is one example, uh, but this is only for the preliminary analysis. When we need a more deeper analysis, uh, we need to use uh, energy audits. 
Uh, this energy audits on the other side provides uh, in-depth data for a specific building. Uh, energy audit is one is in a way is way one to aspects of data collection because it it provides adequate knowledge of the energy consumption profile of the building or group of buildings based on which public administration can take an informed decision on the implementation of the energy efficiency measures. But at the same time also provides analysis and reports the findings and identifies the quantities cost effective energy saving opportunities. Uh, these are energy audits, These are a central tool to achieve energy savings. Uh, they are very necessary to assess the existing energy consumption and to identify the whole range of opportunities to save the energy. So we have uh, several uh, types of the energy audits. We have a simplified, uh, we have uh, like a pass through. Uh, energy audit, we have a simplified one and we have a detailed one. Uh, depends on the complexity of the buildings, uh, we will use the different type of the energy audits. All right. So the first one is data uh, collection. It is uh, before we go to see the buildings, it's very important to find uh, as much data as uh, possible. Um, Data availability and reliability of this information is key to the qualitative energy audit. Uh, you should collect relevant data about the building and relevant, relevant data about the energy consumptions. Uh, engineering drawings uh, like ground plots, cross sections, faces, face, facades, uh, they are necessary for the calculation of the energy balance of the building and some detailed plans, if available, and for information about the construction and the parts of the buildings, uh, which cannot be inspected. Um, we, we strongly recommend to have uh, energy consumptions of at least for the last three years. Uh, if this is not possible, then you have to interpolate it, to have to assess, assess energy consumptions in the last three years according to the one year. Uh, to define the surface area, especially the conditioned area, which are heated and cooled. Uh, to define the typical number of inhabitants and the operation schedule. So for the school, what are the uh, class schedule? What are the after class schedules, after, after class activities? Uh, what is the typical heating and cooling schedule uh, over the weekend uh, if they turn off uh, after the class finish and so on. Uh, if there are some previously energy audits, it's also a very good uh, source of the information. Also, are there any other reports from the previous analysis of the energy efficiency, not only the boilers, but also the other systems uh, in the in the municipal in the buildings and information about the last renovation which are taken into the uh, in, into the building. Um, so the information that uh, gathered from the building owner, this will become financial and management departments of the municipality, is very essential to receive the energy bills that it provides information about the <coughs> energy consumption, energy prices, tariffs, costs, fees, taxes, and so on, and specific CO2 emission of the energy carrier, uh, especially in the uh, energy electricity uh, bills, these kind of deformations are present. Um, energy monitoring provides information about the energy consumptions in a higher resolution. So in the annually, monthly, weekly, daily, real time, and we can also define uh, the trends of the energy consumptions. So uh, the other very important uh, aspect of the energy audit is the field work. Um, if you, when you're going uh, on site, uh, the following information have to be gathered. Uh, area of the building elements. The area are very different element of the building's envelope should be determined. Uh, the areas of the external walls, windows and doors should be calculated by the types and by the orientation. Uh, the areas of the roofs and floors should also be calculated by the types. 
uh, <clears throat> total floor area as well as the heated and cooled area should be evaluated and calculated as well as the volumes. Uh, if the existing documentation is not sufficient or not updated, then all sizes should be measured on site and the areas uh, should be calculated. Uh, construction layers and new values. Additionally to the information from the engineering drawings, uh, the inspection of the parts of the building uh, is necessary. The energy consultant should examine the building as exactly as possible and detect the construction layers as accurate as possible. With this information, the materials and thickness of the layers, the U value in a watt per meter Kelvin, uh, can be calculated for every type of the different building elements and it is the basis for the calculation of the thermal losses of the building's envelope. Uh, the shading uh, to the transparent building elements should also be uh, determined. Uh, technical infrastructures. Um, uh, during the on-site visit, information about the technical infrastructure for heating, uh, ventilation, cooling, heat distribution, hot water, and other systems also should be calculated. Analysis. Um, result of the analysis of this uh, data that we gathered are the calculations and proposal for uh, different sets uh, of the energy efficiency improvement measures compared to the established baseline. There is a, a different uh, keys, so climate corrections, uh, calculation of the energy balance of the building, uh, comparisons of the energy demand and the energy consumptions, and the uh, calculation of the energy performance characteristic of the building and determination of the energy classes. Um, if I only talk about this uh, climate corrections, this mainly refers uh, uh, due to the changes in the weather from the year to year. Uh, the energy consumptions, especially the heat consumptions, can be various. Uh, and thanks to these climate corrections, it is possible to compare the energy consumptions for a single building over several years. Uh, within this climate correction, the annual energy consumptions is referred to local standard year. Uh, the standard year is the result of the calculation of the average temperature over the ter every 30 years, and this is information is uh, nationally accessible. So you can find this uh, uh, standard years, uh, the temper every temperature over the 30 years should be found. You, you could find in the national uh, platforms. Energy audit. Uh, it is very important how to prepare uh, the report. Here are some of the main structures of this uh, energy report. Uh, it is, of course, it is uh, very important to have these introductions, general information, executive summary table for the decision makers to see what is uh, executive summary, uh, legal and normative references, uh, overview of sources on the information, so how you gather all these data. Descriptions of the building, uh, what is the current situation, the, what can be done, what are the systems in the buildings, what can be done, what are the savings, both in the terms of uh, technical aspects and both of the, in the terms of the financial uh, terms, uh, what are the proposed energy efficiency measures uh, to estimate the savings uh, and to economically analyze all the proportion, proposed renovation package. Also, how to integrate renewable energy sources, This, if this is requested, but uh, we highly recommend to also include this into this uh, report. And of course, conclusion, conclusion and recommendations. In the annexes, you can have uh, some sources of the information gathered, how you received all these data, and also other statistical data or calculations that how you can define uh, the energy consumptions in, in, in the building. This is one of the tables that might help you to estimate that what is the price for the um, energy audit. Um, if we are talking about the small buildings, uh, less than 500 square meters, um, for the schools of the kindergartens, uh, there is a maximum 12 mandates. Uh, mandates is uh, 
consists of the eight hours of men working per day. And if you have a, a ratio of one hour, what is the financial ratio of one hour, then you can collate it uh, the men days. And if you are talking about the <coughs> buildings between five and 15,000 15, uh, square meters, there is a maximum for the school or kindergarten is 20 hour, 21 uh, uh, men days. Uh, I would say that uh, also for the hospitals, uh, which are very complex buildings is also can be a little bit more about like I would say 24 to 25 men days. But uh, on the other side, the health and every house can be significantly decreased to the 15 men days. If you're talking about large building, more than uh, 15,000 uh, square meters, you're talking about the maximum of the 24th man days uh, per buildings. So this is estimated price uh, for the energy audit and for the preparation of the report of the energy audits. This is one circle of uh, recommissioning, optimization, fine tuning. Uh, uh, of course, it is very important that this is a constant uh, activities from monitoring to motivation for planning, financing, installation, operation, and then again, monitoring. Uh, it is the energy management is a constant process. It's not like a process of uh, uh, one month or half a year or one year, but it's a constant process. It always can be something to be can be improved. This is very important. Um, that uh, there is um, there is uh, some expected savings that we achieve these savings. If we don't achieve these uh, savings, then we have to do some uh, recommission. We have to do uh, some recalculations uh, that we have to do turn on what has been wrong, whether the uh, energy audit was not in appropriate way, whether the documentation was not prepared uh, in appropriate way. Maybe the calculations were wrong. Uh, maybe the uh, the measure energy consumptions uh, in the in the previous analysis was uh, not incorrect. Inc incorrect. So we have to go reverse plan to see what has what has been gone wrong. Uh, so maybe there was a poorly performed energy audit, inappropriate. We 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 set goals in appropriate way. Uh, in a regular financial calculation or mainly poorly managed procurement process. This is only one of the aspects that uh, can also influence into the um, into the uh, results of the energy audit. So there is maybe there is inappropriate energy systems, equipment, solution, wrong installation in the building. Uh, maybe we inappropriate measure the results. Uh, we don't we don't have enough suitable monitoring and verification to check available results. Uh, of course, there is inappropriate human behavior in the buildings or inappropriate system regulation. So these are the aspects that we have to examine if there is we don't achieve uh, we don't achieve results uh, set in the energy audit. So um, this is uh, it's a systematic approach focusing on the inspection of the existing energy systems in building, the process of its operation in maintaining. So measuring and this verification. Um, this is the process of planning, measuring, collecting, analyzing data for the pur purpose of verifying and reporting energy savings uh, within this individual facility resulting uh, from the implementation from the energy specific energy efficiency measures. Um, we usually cannot uh, directly measure the savings and this savings can be seen according to the, um, because this uh, savings represent the absence of this energy use. Uh, instead of this, savings are determined by comparing measured used before and after implementation in the project and to make appropriate adjustment for the changes in the condition. So we have to start at the very much of the beginning uh, of the building. Um, so understand the current situation, review the documentation like energy audits, financial analysis, project design, and so on. Uh, 
a measurement and verification plan is an essential element for developing this analysis, implemented energy efficiency, uh, and to set this prioritized improvement and implementation. Uh, I can show you some examples. Uh, this is one of the kindergarten. Uh, it is uh, the heat. It was uh, the energy consumption before the renovation was 206 kilowatt hours per year. This is very highly energy consumption uh, number. Uh, and after the energy consumption, after the renovation, it was estimated to almost 100 kilowatt hours per square meters annually. Uh, but that uh, real measured energy consumptions after the renovation was 180. So we started uh, to see the monitoring system. So what? Well, it's wrong, wrong. And then in the very cold winter days, we found out that there is a, more than 50 windows were open. So uh, the human behavior in this kindergarten was not on a very uh, high level. And you also find that the regulation system was off. So there were there was no regulation systems uh, in, in this building and this controller was turned off. So there was nothing we can do.